Well, hello! I'd like to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is especially exciting because I just got sent home from school early. Uh, 1.30 in the afternoon, the snow was coming down on <laughs> October 10th. So hard, and uh, the roads were looking bad out in the country, and the wind was blowing, and they just decided, nope, let's not do this. Uh, but I will say, looks like we're getting off better than the rest of the state, because... <laughs> Uh, we're going to measure our snow in inches, and uh, parts of the state are going to be measuring it in feet. So, good day to be in the banana belt of North Dakota. So, let's dive into the pens. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, I've got some fun pens, some old favorites coming back, and a tour of my mystery destination. So let's dive into it. All right, from left to right, I have my Lamy 80, which I think I did a first impression of this while I was still in the old set downstairs with the green screen. Uh, Platinum President. Brought it out last week or the week before, one of those, to compare to the... Uh, Estabrook Esty. I have my Senate Senator President because I thought hey let's do some more presidents only this president has Ukrainian writing on him. True story. I have a Kreutzer which is a video oh something feels loose in there. Yeah something is loose in there wow okay so maybe not the right size converter for this pen or maybe it just had a real shock I don't know so we'll see how that goes so that's a Kreutzer anyway Senator Concord this week's uh, live streamed first impression uh, one of the comments I got well a couple of them had to do with my awful intro because I didn't realize I was filming and then said a few things that were not well hello <laughs> but uh, anyway I'm going to try getting the camera closer because I don't I can't use this camera during live streams because this camera just isn't capable of it uh, an Inox Chrome Caravel 1920 or 1920 Caravel something like that Spanish pen anyway uh, in response to I was looking for the comment and couldn't find it so I'm guessing it must have been in the live stream my Stipula Etruria with T flex and because pens and T did a video of the new iteration of this pen I decided to bring out my Aurora duo cart which was one of the first modern iteration which was sold in the original box because they apparently they still had some original boxes floating around down in their basement which you no longer get well I will say that I love the light green color of the one that she reviewed As always, I'll be doing this. Vi I'll be doing my writing. Sorry, in this Bomo Art Journal. I'm just too excited about being home early. I think, but yeah, Bomo Art Journal. And this is the sort of view that uh, the live stream I'm struggling with. Uh, the live stream camera is this, because it can and it mounts to the same tripod. Uh, so no zooming with it unless it's done like this. So what I'm going to try to do next time is just lower the tripod. Um, but i got to be careful because I have to look decent too, although I'm not the important part of the live stream. All right, so my first pen, I rev oh, give you a quick better look, is a Lamy 80. When you saw it in its first impression, which if you go to the link in the video description, let's pull back just a teeny bit, that seems almost too close because uh, you can't see the pen. But when you look at its first impression you would have seen that it had a tag on it of course the tag has come off and you know, I don't care I, I'm not a collector to admire pens as they were I'm a pe collector to enjoy pens and oh boy do I enjoy this one double broad gold nib definitely some features in common with the Lamy 2000 the lighting seems really off today. I'm not sure why. 
I may have accidentally turned off. I, I ran this camera, this this camera dead. I may not have my custom settings turned on. So uh, if the color is off, that would be why. So I will play with that. I do have a big list of things I want to get done with this bonus day off. So I didn't leave room to do the ink swatch, so we'll do it right here. So I'm using Le Co Co Noodlers, sorry, wow, would be nice to tell you that. Noodlers de Couleur Royale, which in the preview on the on the camera screen is looking blue, but it's kind of a purple. Um, I guess purple used to be kind of the royal color. Um, expensive dye, all that. So, without researching the history of the ink, I think that's actually the reference there. Uh, for my next two pens, I felt it was time to compare some presidents. Don't worry, not getting all political on you. <laughs> this president is Japanese, uh, and the other president is German, with Ukrainian writing. <laughs> this president is... Uh, a platinum president which is a pen that is really I assume when I first bought it I fell in love uh, I had it ground to a broad cursive italic at uh, Nib Smith and yeah I've enjoyed it very much the ink in it is diamine Damson, which I'll be honest, the color did for more did more for me in the preview on the screen than it did when I actually got it. Not that it's a bad color, I'll just that's kind of a dusky purple. I do like those, uh, but it's the rare pen that this pen that this color really shows off. And I'd say this particular pen does a meh job of showing it off. Um, also worth noting, for many hundreds of dollars more, if you're into that kind of thing, you can get this exact same nib in the Platinum Izumo series. Uh, there's one in particular that's uh, based off of a temple that I absolutely love. Whoops, that wasn't as bad as it sounded, I promise. Um, but uh, out of the budget at the moment. Uh, my next pen is this beautiful uh, senator president uh, this is kind of ironic that a pen called uh, president <laughs> has a uh, ukrainian writing at the moment but uh anyway open up fbi I don't have any shoes on. Hey, there's snow out here. Um, well, hello. So that was an exciting Thursday afternoon and not just because of the snow. So anyway, some guys in dark suits and a bunch of black SUVs dragged me out of the house. Uh, I ended up flying to Washington, D.C. Uh, where I met with... I was dragged to this white building where I had to meet with this orange guy. And, and this orange guy started going on about Joe Biden. And I'm like, what? And uh, anyway, he, he just went on and on. And he really wasn't making a whole lot of sense. But anyway, finally got out of there. I, I just kept saying, it's a German pen. It's not Ukrainian. And it's Ministry of Coal. And he, you know, beautiful, clean coal. It's like, no, just coal. I, I don't care. I just want to go back to North Dakota. Um, I, I guess Matt North, saying I was from North Dakota was the magic word, so I got to leave. Well, anyway, as, as I'm leaving this white building, I got arrested again, this time by some more people in black SUVs. Weird how that works in our government. And dragged to see some lady named Nancy. And she started 
going after me about evidence of collusion and my senator president with the Ukrainian writing and how did I get it and you know did, did I assist the president she knew I met with the president like it's a pen it's it's a senator president pen and and, and uh, yeah I, I could not get it across to her that no senator isn't a office in government because then she wanted to know which senators were helping the president like no it's a pen senator president and then she wanted to know how did this pen she got that through to her how this pen get ukrainian writing on i i don't know i bought it on ebay for like a hundred dollars i i have no idea so friday comes i'm finally back in north dakota just in time to film a well photograph a football game in the flipping snow because that hasn't disappeared since thursday and uh that was very cold i got back from the the football game i could, couldn't even feel my fingers and after being up all night talking to the orange man and some lady named nancy i was just exhausted so i i had to sleep so i'm finishing this up on saturday i don't care let it be late you're lucky you're even getting anything after the rotten time that pen gave me i'm almost tempted to not even ever write with it again but you know what just to stick it to the orange man and nancy i'm gonna write with it so i don't know where i was but somehow i was talking about this senator president uh ukrainian ministry of coal my guess is it had nothing to do with co collusion bribery or any of the other stuff or you know foreign interference in elections i'm pretty sure this was a pen given to people related to the ministry of coal uh, it does have a glorious nib you can find these with gold nibs or steel nibs. I happen to get a gold nib. Whoops, and a tour. So it's a broad. The ink in it, which... Uh, when I inked it up on Wednesday, seemed very suitable for the season. Not so much anymore with all the white stuff out there. Diamine Autumn Oak. I don't know if the microphone is picking up this lovely Saturday morning wind. But there is quite a wind blowing out there. So, Senator President Broad with a diamine autumn oak. I've heard that the steel nibs are not quite as good as the gold nibs with this particular pen. Uh, I'm also surprised by how light it feels. I've always heard, you know, similar pens like the Mont Blanc 149 called very heavy. This one definitely is not. But, you know, you compare their size. It's a little bigger than the Platinum President. Perhaps a bit more ornate. But both very good, very solid pens. And then I have the Kreutzer, which uh, I think next weekend, because I'll have some time next weekend. Thank you, Nancy and Orange Man, for taking away my free time this week. Uh, to talk about this Kreutzer and do a review on it, this was actually given to me by a viewer. The ink in it is, again, Diamine Autumn Oak. Uh, again, I filled it up back before the fluffy white stuff. And I just thought it would be interesting to include it this week, just to compare the same ink in two different pens. And you saw none of that, because... I keep forgetting to look at the preview on the camera right in front of my face. And then we get the this week's first impression, which I did as a live stream. This is a Senator, no, yes, Senator Concord 500. With uh, a Reform Iridium Point nib, which is uh, interesting. I filled this up with an ink that I've heard compared 
to Diamine Autumn Oak in terms of shading. Uh, now this probably is not a fair comparison. Oh, what's this look like? About a medium to you? Medium or a fine? I don't know. Anyway, the ink is Noodler's. Let's make sure it's actually on the screen this time. Apache Sunset. I think I'm rushing on the squares. I feel like I'm late, but it really wasn't my fault. This has been appearing for a few weeks in a row. It's it's pretty low on ink, but since the ink's in it, and I've actually enjoyed this pen. Another one that's been somewhat compared to the Mobile 149, although it's definitely a lot smaller. Uh, my Inoxcrom Caravel 1920, which is a Spanish pen. And I'll be honest, part of the reason I'm enjoying this pen right now so much, because uh, I've put a few inks in it that just turned out to be duds, is the ink. It's Noodlers. Whoops, Noodlers. <laughs> Green Cactus Eel. It's just such a pretty color. You know, say what you will about Nathan Tardif or Noodlers inks, but there are some wonderful colors that come out of that pen out of that company and I think this is one of them Apache Sunset I'll be honest I could take or leave the color Royale I like but it doesn't do anything special for me it's just a nice purplish but this is a really attractive ink Now, it must have been during my uh, live stream, because I definitely got off the topic of the Senator Concord, which I am prone to do during a live stream. Um, somebody asked about this pen, because I tried searching Stipula in my comments, and I couldn't find a recent comment about it, but I remember being asked about it. So here it is. This is the Stipula Etruria 88 Magma Edition with t flex. It's a... Uh, a very nice finish you know I kind of like I've seen the rainbow finish one of the people I follow on Instagram has one with a rainbow finish and he shows it every so often I think it's beautiful uh, I don't know there was something about magma just appealed to me now if you've been following the saga of this pen you know this pen and I haven't always seen eye to eye and indeed, that does have to do with t uh, I I've switched out the feed several times you know, with like cheap Chinese pens. With a, I think this has the Delta Serena feed in it. It made no difference to the Delta Serena, but made a night and day difference to this pen. And yet I still had trouble getting this pen to write. Well, I'm not quite satisfied that the nib is perfectly seated against the feed, any of the feeds. Uh, I know what on the camera looks like light shining through isn't because it's not as bad as it looks there. That's actually a reflection from how my lighting is angled around the pen. Uh, but it just doesn't look to my eye like it seats properly. But it's a you know plastic feed so it's a lot harder. Well maybe this angle will show better why I say that. But it's a lot harder to uh, let's say manipulate a plastic feed. Oh yeah my lighting isn't up. Uh, yeah, my lighting is not up to the task of showing you what I mean. But I will say, I have been writing with this pen. I, I got to looking back, what inks have I used in this pen? And I have not tried any Japanese inks in this pen. So I thought I'd give one a shot. And I've written a few pages with it. And honestly, the trouble I've had, I'm not having. And I will say, part of the trouble I've had has been with Stipula inks. Gotta do t flags. And this ink, of course, Japanese, Roshizuku. 
might need three lines for this, which will help correct uh, how my ink swatches are getting misaligned with the actual pen. Full use Yogan. Uh, definitely a color more suited to the weather outside now, although it's bright and sunny despite the wind and the snow, so go figure. But I could be in Devil's Lake right now where they're measuring the amount of snow outside in feet, so I'm not going to complain too much. And you can see it's not having any trouble. So I will be curious, maybe it doesn't like European inks or American inks. Maybe this likes Japanese inks, even though it's an Italian pen. I don't know, but it likes this one. And finally, I was watching Pens and Tea this week while I was brushing my teeth or shaving or something, and she reviewed, apparently there's a new version of this, the Aurora Duo cart out, where they fixed what were apparently some problems with the previous iteration. They also brought back this color as well as a few new colors. I liked her color a lot, her uh, green. Um, not enough to buy one because I already have one that works and there's, other than color, there's nothing special about it that makes me want another one. But uh, I'm glad uh, Aurora is continuing with this model. Of course it's a medium nib they all are even now they don't offer a choice in nib size which actually matches what the pen was at the time at the time it was released in the 1960s it was a student pen definitely not priced that way now but i put aurora blue black in it it's a uh, I like the Parker Blue Black and the Pilot Blue Black better, but it just seemed like in an Aurora pen I should put the Aurora Blue Black, and I have some, so that's what I used. And I know the Parker Blue Black kind of has that teal thing going on, which some people do not appreciate, but I appreciate it, so I'm the one using it, so that's all that matters. So I hardly even remember the topics I, I wanted to talk about after all the excitement I had in filming this video, but uh, I know snow was one of them. Um, I also wanted to just briefly mention that uh, I took a tour last week. Um, I filmed pens in use, I want to say on a Thursday. Anyway, filmed it early. Uh, because Friday after school, I had to leave right away, get in my car, and drive to Valley City because I had a class on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Valley City, if you know the state, is quite far from where I live, about five hours of driving one way. So, yay. Uh, I'm not, you, if you know me, I'm not somebody who loves driving. I like being at destinations. I just don't like the getting there. Once in a while, the driving's fun, but for the most part, uh I'd rather ride while somebody else drives, and I never get that chance. And I know that's weird for a guy who has this weird obsession with doing driving videos that a lot of people don't watch. But, um, yeah. And speaking of that, there will be some driving video footage. Uh, I'll, I'll try to give you a preview with these scenes upcoming here. Uh, just of a small piece of that. But Valley City is on the Cheyenne River Valley Scenic Byway, which is scenic. And it's along the Cheyenne River. <laughs> uh, but Cheyenne, or I'm um, sorry, Valley City, I, I honestly, before I visited, I never really uh, thought much about it. You know, I knew there was a college there. I'd been into Valley City far enough to go to the college several times. In fact, I have taken my students to that college be twice. Uh, one year we went to, they have a, um, a planetarium. And another year we went there and a physics professor gave us a programming lesson and then gave us a tour of the campus. And uh, so I really appreciated that very much. Um, uh, I, okay, yeah, and we stopped, I happen to think, we stopped one other year 
to tour a park that's there that's set up it wasn't the right time of year to enjoy this but it was it's set up to uh, so that certain things line up at specific times of the year and the shadows do certain exact specific behaviors it's a very cool park which you will see probably way too much of it in the upcoming footage but it was neat this time i had driven once through downtown valley city and it turns out you know, I, I admittedly, I was on a mission. I wanted somewhere to eat and everything was closed because it was a Sunday and it's rural North Dakota, so nothing's open. Um, but uh, turns out I missed a lot driving through it the first time, so uh, saw a lot more this time. It was kind of fun. Did not get time to go tour the campus, so now I've been thinking, you know, these pens on the road, if, if I've taken you to Bismarck, or do I and I go to Bismarck again, do I just say, oh, look, here's the same streets you saw before? Or maybe look at some other facets of these towns. Well, Valley City has a university that I'll have to explore. And at some point, you will see the driving footage used for, for, a pen, for a driving video. So let's take a look at Valley City. Of course, I started out along Main Street in Valley City, and, uh, whoa, what's that? The Cheyenne River, I believe. And I, I was going to do this as my title screen, but I changed my mind. Because, yeah, that's an otter. You read Circle of Light by Neil Hancock? There's an otter in there, so I like otters. Um, then there's this park. I'll come back to the park later. There's a Husqvarna dealer on the other side. Uh, this building, really nice tower, looks like an underground parking garage and an elevator, and you get to see the workings. Later I saw somebody come down the elevator, but I didn't want to show the guy, so I only show this part. Uh, Valley City, even though it's a town of almost 7,000 people, has its grocery store on Main Street. Hello, my small town of 1,500. Where did you go wrong? And a few other businesses. And just to make the point, there's my finger. And there's the grocery store. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure why I showed the finger part. Uh, there were some businesses open, even though it was very early. The main business was, of course, a bakery, which you'll see here in just a minute. Um, I didn't go in, I'll be honest. Baked goods aren't really my thing. I, I mean, I like some of it, but mostly I just kind of, eh. Uh, there was also a restaurant open somewhere else for breakfast. This is a pizza place. We sell their pizza as in Science Olympiad as a fundraiser. And a used bookstore! In fact, there were two bookstores I ran into just wandering around Main Street. So for a town of 7,000. Oh my god! Yes! Uh, there was a random store that I think might have been interesting to tour. Um, didn't tour it because, of course, nothing was open yet. And yeah, Teen Center! Teens may not be paying taxes yet, but someday they will. And in the meantime, hey, let's make them part of society and let's value them. Oh, but they don't vote. Whatever, dude. Um, very cool post office. I wish my town had one that cool. Uh, art gallery, which actually fo focused on photography, which I really appreciated. Um... I, I think my town could have an art gallery. This traffic is for a restaurant I think was open for breakfast. And then just some more businesses, uh, clothing stores. Uh, another bookstore was in there somewhere. Um, another bookstore is down here. And a piano randomly sitting in the rain for some reason, which I do not get. Yeah, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah, a piano was sitting out in the rain for... Why? I don't know, did somebody forget to put it away, or what was up with that? And then this just seemed to preside over a lot of the scenes I was exploring, so I just had to film it. And here we go, the Husqvarna dealer on the other side of the park with the caboose. So, get an idea where I'm at. Now, this was a really cool park. Uh, Medicine Wheel Park. Check out some Native American culture. Uh, you'll get an idea what a medicine wheel is. I've dealt with it before in my teaching. Hey, you look really wet. Got a friend? Or are you just here by yourself? Of course, a beautiful animal had, like that had a friend. But yeah, Medicine Wheel Park has the planets in it, a medicine wheel. And there's some reassurance that the dog had a friend. And 
a human to make sure the dog didn't get in trouble. Well, just another view of the Medicine Wheel Park and uh, the walk I took to both days to where I took my class. And yeah, the planets are there. Uh, it's aligned along various things for shadows at different times of the year. Guess what planet that is. And uh, yeah, it's set up by a physicist. This is the planet most teenagers would like to appreciate. But last, oh, there's a view over Valley City with the fog getting in the way. So thank you, fog and rain. But don't worry, I'll come back and we'll see this view again. Another view again. Fog, thank you. Beautiful bridge back there, but we can't see it. So, yeah. So anyway, I was just saying, most teenagers like a certain other planet, but I had a teenager who was obsessed with this particular planet. And here he is. His face is a little better than that, but yeah. So, I'm glad he's obsessed with Neptune, not the other one. And this is the parking lot of the place where I was at. And what's that? Yeah, they included Pluto, even though science says it's not quite a planet, but doggone it, I think it should be included. And there is where I took my class. Uh, computer science class, because uh, I've got that on my license now, in addition to science and math. Uh, here's looking over the park where all that was. And we're going to pan over Valley City here. Valley City is sometimes called the City of Bridges. I didn't think the bridges showed up the best in here, but there's a really high trestle bridge in the way background for railroad. And there's, I forget how many, but a lot of bridges in Valley City. Uh, just a cool place. There's another view of Valley City, which was before obscured by fog. And yeah, I think I'm going to be coming back here. This was fun. And when I say places to retire, this has the small town bonus too. Because I'm a small town guy my whole life. Uh, right here, I'm on the Cheyenne River Valley Scenic Highway. Uh, very close to Catherine, North Dakota, if you know where that is. And uh, I just thought I'd share it with you just a little bit. This will be a driving video eventually when I get some time to record some more driving videos. But I thought it was nice to share the trees, uh, just a little bit of the view, a little bit of the scenicness. Um, I'm about to turn into Catherine, but not yet. In fact, this particular five minute clip, which you won't see the whole thing, actually does include my turn into Catherine and most of my trip through Catherine, because. You know, Catherine, North Dakota isn't exactly a population high spot in North Dakota. Valley City is number 13 in North Dakota for population. Catherine is ooh, a little bit below that. But you get a sense of what Cheyenne River Valley is about. And as I returned home from this trip, I came up through uh, Montpelier and uh, Ypsilanti. In fact, I took the uh, gravel between Montpelier and Ypsilanti up to Jamestown and wow amazing and here you can see the Catherine elevator off to the to the, your left there and uh, you know the town of Catherine is around it so you get an idea notion what it's all about so look forward to that I hope that was interesting I hope it was worth the wait uh, I want to apologize for my interruption as I was told it was my fault for using a Ukrainian pen called president and uh, has Senator in its name. I apparently confused all kinds of people in our federal government, especially with all the drama going on right now. But uh, got through it. I'm back alive. I haven't been put in some secret jail. Um, I think telling the orange guy I was from North Dakota saved me. And, and uh, I had to change a battery there. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> yeah left the camera run while I was away. Um, <laughs> the uh, So anyway, t talking to, uh, I had to tell, telling the orange guys president, or I was from North Dakota, I think saved me because the orange guy has some supporters here. And uh, I, I think telling Nancy that about the pen and my pen collecting and everything finally got through to her. So yeah, no collusion here. Uh, nothing to do with any federal elections. I just happen to have a pen with the from the Ukrainian Ministry of Coal. So uh want to thank you for watching. 
And if videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And maybe you could talk about the snow where you are, or the times you've been arrested by the FBI, or maybe you'd like to share your thoughts about the real world in Valley City. So thank you for watching, we'll see you later, bye bye.